Hi, how you doing? Get a hope. I have another book. Actually, I was going to stop reading these books on uh, the UFOs, which I'm still researching on the internet. But uh, these fell, there, I had a couple fall into my hands that I thought must have been really important because there's a thing called uh, synchronicity that happens in life when you get in the shape I'm in and uh, this one book is called UFOs Myths, Conspiracies and Realities by John B. Alexander Ph.D. The foreword is by Jax F. Valley, commentary by Tom Clancy, and introduction by Bert Rutan. Now this guy, I guess he was in the government. So he ought to know, can't sit very good, he ought to know a lot about it like he says, being in the government before. And I'll read you the flap. A never before told first hand account by a government insider of his experience on the cutting edge of UFO exploration. While still on active duty in the U.S. Army during the 1980s, Colonel John B. Alexander, Ph.D., created an interagency group to explore the controversial topic of UFOs. Participants came from the Army, Navy, Air Force, CIA, NSA, DIA, and the aerospace industry. All members held top secret clearance. What they discovered was not at all what was expected. UFOs covers the numerous cases they saw and answers questions such as what was really in Hangar 18? Did a UFO land at Hollow Man Air Force Base? What happened at Roswell? What is Majestic 12? What is the Avery? What does the government know about UFOs? What happened with disclosures in other countries? Has the U.S. reverse-engineered a UFO? Why doesn't presidents get access to UFO info? UFOs is at once a complete account of Alexander's findings and a call to action. There are no conspiracy theories here, only hard facts. And you writers know that the most important part. But they are merely the beginning. Serious research is needed in order to understand and anticipate the workings of UFOs and John Alexander is leading the charge. And yes, we need to do a lot of research on our government. Absolutely. Especially with this couple of books I've been reading. Let me just give you the names of the chapter in this book. And you can start doing some research. But I'm telling you right now. You go to this man. See what he's talking about. And he's written this book. And you can't just read one book about any issue. You have to read them all. You know, you might not understand one person who writes a book. And then understand the next. And one writer on an issue may write some of what you understand. And some you don't. And the next book you read on the same issue by a different author. They could have more information and details about a subject that the first one didn't. So... Until you feel satisfied, don't stop reading any books on these issues like this. That's why I kept reading, and especially when these came. Okay. 
in the first chapter. Advanced Theoretical Physics Project Disclosed. The second is the Corso Conundrum. Number three, the Condon Report Revisited. Number four, the Congressional Hearings That Never Happened. Number five, the Government and UFOs. The Presidential Paradox, number six. Number seven is Majestic Twelve. Number eight, the Apollo Lunar Program. Number nine, reverse engineering UFOs. Real cases and hard data is number ten. Number eleven chapter, the UK connection. Number twelve, sworn to secrecy. Number thirteen, <clears throat> what NATO knows. Number fourteen, considerations speculation and puzzles addressed. Number 15, the Twilight Zone, which was really particularly caring for me as I feel like I'm living in the Twilight Zone. <laughs> no kidding. After what I've been experiencing and seeing and catching on film, it feels like the Twilight Zone here for me. And especially this one, chapter 13, about what NATO knows. We Americans have been given very little information about NATO. And I think I only found one book and can't remember hardly anything I read about NATO at the library. And we have a huge one. We're a bunch of towns with a bunch of libraries that's all together and called the Metropolitan Library System. There's so many libraries, so many towns all joined together called Oklahoma City. Anything complicated, crooks can hide. It's easy for them. Now this one on chapter 13. <coughs> what a peculiar number. I'm not superstitious, but some people are. <laughs> The day will come, undoubtedly, when the phenomenon will be observed with technological means of detection and collection that won't leave a single doubt about its origin. But it exists. It is real. And that in itself is an important conclusion. Major General Wilfred de Brouwer, Deputy Chief of Royal Belgian Air Force. It has been reported that the North Atlantic Treaty Organization NATO has special knowledge about UFOs. A good deal of this information comes from a retired U.S. Army Command Sergeant, Major Robert O. Dean, who was assigned at Paris in 1964 at what was then SHAPE Headquarters. SHAPE was the Supreme Headquarters Allied, allied powers Europe and was later moved to Mons, Belgium. Shape was an element of NATO and thus the information provided does fit the organizational scenario. For the record I have met Command Sergeant Marjorie Dean on several occasions and found him to be an affable gentleman. However we agree to disagree about NATO and the UFO topic. Now, our people have had info hidden to them from about the government. And as far as I've studied and found out, and have worked in for in and for state governments in America, in the federal line, their agencies are like all our different states everywhere, all collected together. But there's so many that's hiding, and I'm wondering, have our enemies infiltrated? Or has there been some real ETs? infiltrating looking like a humanoid in there or even invisible 
influencing our people because there was a question that I remember when I was quite young when the Russians were studying uh, telepathy and influencing people with uh, energetic waves and things like that and I've been finding some stuff on that too and I will add later but right now I'm thinking about this stuff and I will add uh, <clears throat> the link if I can find it quick with this that tells about the energy waves that they use on people's minds and things like that and believe me I've heard things before I even knew about all this stuff because I worked with uh, with mental health and around other people that had problems and harm from some of these things like this and that's a different story but if you're researching stuff I am hey go for it <laughs> hope you find even more than I do because I'm still looking I mean this is crazy life and have a wonderful week and I'll make another one later for you and have a good one day or night wherever you are